Hello friends, welcome to risingpearl.com. Today we are talking about series 8 where we are learning a great deal on arithmetic progressions. Friends, this is webisode number 6 and today's topic is how do we find the nth term, nth term in a AP which is arithmetic progression. So friends, I hope you are following us along at risingpearl.com because uh, ever since we started this series from first episode onwards and we took the first couple of episodes to explain what is arithmetic progression and some of the abbreviations then that go with it how do we write the first term how do we write the common difference what is the common difference we looked at then uh, uh, I think it was episode 3 4 5 the last three episodes where we took, started taking a look at some of the relatively simpler types of questions but nonetheless pretty fundamental questions on arithmetic progression so today we are going to talk about what is the nth term of an arithmetic progression. So let's let's say that we have an arithmetic progression that starts with A. The first term is A and the common difference is D. Now, so we write the first term A1 equals A. So this represents the, the number of the term, that is the first term. So for example, think something like if you have, let's try write it here, say if you have arithmetic progression 2 4, 6, 8, and 10. So, this is the first term. This is our A1. This is a second term. This is our A2. So on and so forth. Right. So, this will be our fourth term. The value itself is 8, but we represent this as the fourth term. This is a first term, second term, third term, fourth term. So, when we say A1, we are talking about the first term. So, the first term is A. Now, let's write the second term. The second term is, we know the definition of arithmetic progression is, we take the last term and then we add common difference to it. So for the second term, we take the first term, A1, and we will add common difference to it. In other words, we will have A1 is equal to A, so this will be A plus D, right? Now, let's move on and write the third term. So if we write the third term, we will have to take the second term, and then we have to add common difference to it to get to the third term, right? So what is the second term? Second term is A plus D. So let's write it here. A plus D, this is the second term. And so this is the second term. Let's put it in a bracket. And plus, we have to add the D, D. So if we do that, this becomes A plus, A plus, D plus D is twice D, or 2D. Now, so similarly, if you look at A4, A4 will be equal to A3, A3 plus D. Now what is A3? A3 is this, which is A plus twice D. Now let's put this in a bracket. This is A3 and we add D to it. So this will be A plus 2D plus 1D is 3D. 3D. So similarly, let's do probably one more and then I'll tell you why I'm writing it in this fashion. So let's say the fifth term will be we take the fourth term and we add D, which is a common difference to it. Now A4 is this. So A4 actually is A plus 3D and then we add an extra D, which is this D to it. So it becomes a plus 3D plus 1D is 4D. This is actually D. So this will become 4D. So let's pause for a moment. And now if you take a look at the second term. So we can write the second term as, we can write the second term as A plus, now this is D, right? So we can write this as 2 minus 1 times d. Because 2 minus 1 is 1 d, which is exactly what it is. We have 1 d. Now similarly, for a3, we can write this as a plus 3 minus 1 times d. Because 3 minus 1 is 2. So this really is 2 d, which is what we have. So we are just taking the 2 d and writing this as 3 minus 1 times d. 
So similarly, if we take a look at the fourth term, we can write this as a plus 4 minus 1 times d. 4 minus 1 is 3, which is 3d. Fifth term, we can write this as a plus 5 minus 1 times d. Because 5 minus 1 is 4, so this will be really 4d, a plus 4d, which is what we have. So we are taking a look at each of these, the second, th this term, and we are writing it in this fashion. So the question is, why are we doing this? And similarly, you can even argue that for the first term, a, we can write this as a plus 1 minus 1 times d. Because 1 minus 1 is 0, so 0 times d is 0, so it is only a. So friends, the reason we did it this way is we were, we are trying to establish some relationship with the the number of the term what it is right and the value of the term meaning here the subscript says this is the first term second term this is a third term third term this is the fourth term and this is the fifth term right so the subscript represents the term number so this is the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, like that. And this represents the actual value. So for example, A3 is this. It means the third term, which is this, the value of the third term is given by this. So what we are trying to establish, now if you look closely, if you pay, your, if you pay attention now to this number, or this number, or this number, this number, and similarly this number, you can see that this really shows the number of the term, meaning if this is first term, we have 1 here. If, if this is second term, right, a2, this is 2. If it is third term, this is 3. If this is fourth term, this is 4. This is fifth term, this is 5. And the rest remains constant. Because the rest is a plus 1 minus d times d, a plus 2 minus 1 times d, a plus 3 minus 1 times d. So what we are basically saying is, let's, let's give ourselves a little bit more space. So what we are saying is, if we, for example, let's say we did the fifth term, right? And what we saw was it was a plus 5 minus 1 times d. So similarly, for example, say if we have to write, let's say, the eighth term. So we can write this as a plus 8 minus 1 times d, right? Or generally speaking, if we pick any number, say a n, where n is the number of the term, like which term is it? We can write this as a plus n minus 1 times d. So this is what is meant by finding the nth term. That is, again, what we are talking about is if we take any arithmetic progression, right? So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. This is, this is one arithmetic progression and this is true for any arithmetic progression. So this represents the first term. This represents the second term. This is the third term, this is the fourth term, this is the fifth term. So this particular example has five terms. It starts with two and the common difference is two, right? Because four minus two, so common difference in this case is two, right? So again, the difference between these two, they are all two. So what we are saying is the nth term. So let's say, for example, if you want to write, find out the fourth term, the value of the fourth term is 8, but the fourth term itself will be a plus, because it is the fourth term, so n equals 4, so we put a plus, instead of n, we will put 4 minus 1 times d. Now, let's see if it actually makes sense. a is 2, because our starting value is 2, plus 4 minus 1 is 3, times what is the common difference, which is 2 for us in this case. So in other words, we have 2 plus 3 to the 6 
or 2 plus 6 is 8. So indeed, the fourth term, as we have just seen, if we use this formula, so the fourth term, when we put n equal to 4, which is going to give us the fourth term, the value of the fourth term, if we know the first term, we have to know the first term and we have to know the common difference. So if the first term is known to us, this is the first term, if the first term is known to us and if the common difference is known to us, then we can find out the value of any of the term, whether the second term, third term, fourth term, eighth term, twelfth term, so on and so forth, by simply using this formula a plus n minus 1 times d, where a is the first term, n is the number of the term. This is very important to keep in mind. n, which is a subscript, is the number of the term. So when we say n equal to 4, we are talking about the fourth term whose value is a. So simply by putting the values for a and d and n, the number of the term, we can really find out the value of any of the terms within a AB. So let's say for example, let's just put this to test. So we, we have an AB. Let's say it is given that this is arithmetic progression, right? And we have been asked to find out the missing values. So how do we solve this? So first thing is that if it is an AB, we look at it and we say, well, the A, which is the first term, is given as 8. We know this. Now let's find out the common difference. So common difference will be, we can say it is A2 minus A1, right? Because it is a difference of the second term minus first one, right? We Because we don't know the value of this, we don't want to say this minus this. Similarly, because we don't know the value of this, we cannot say 17 minus this. And the same reason for this. But what we do know is these two consecutive terms are known. So we will use this to find out the value of D. So 11 minus 8, so this will be 11 minus 8, which will be equal to 3. So now what we have is, we have the value for the first term. So the first term is given as 8, and common difference, the value of D, is also given as 3. Now, what is this term? First, second, third. So this one actually is the third term. This is the third term, and this is the fifth term. So in other words, what we have to do, we have to find out the value of A3, and we have to find out the value of A3. So the value of A3, we can use the formula, which is A plus N minus 1, which we just saw. So let's put the value. So A equals 8. A is the value of the first term. And N, what is N? N is the number of the term, which is the third term. So N equals 3. 3 minus 1 times D. What is D? D is the common difference, which is 3. So now let's see what is the value. So we have 8 plus 3 minus 1 is 2 times 3. And we will get this will be equal to 8 plus 6. 3 to the 6 or this will be equal to 14. So this value should be equal to 14. Right? This is 14. And the fifth value will be equal to a plus n minus 1 times d. So a is 8, which is the first term, plus n is 5, because we are talking about the, what is the number of the term, right? nth term means we are trying to find out the fifth term. So n is equal to 5, 5 minus 1 times 3. 3 is the common difference. So this will be 8 plus 4, 5 minus 1, 4 times 3, or this will be equal to 8 plus 8 plus 12, which is equal to 20. So this will be 20. So now, actually, you, you could have simply said that, well, the common difference is 3. So why don't we add 3 to 11, and that will give us 14, and you will be absolutely correct. And similarly, if you add 7, if you add 3 to 14, then you will get 17, right? 
or the moment you have found out the common difference is 3, then you can simply subtract 3 from 17 and you would have got 14 and you would have added 3 to 17 and you would have got 20. I wanted to show you this way so that to highlight the fact that if you know A and if you know D, you can find the value of any of the terms within an arithmetic progression. So in other words, the nth term, the nth term of an AP or which is represented by A subscript N of any AP with the first term as A, if the first term is A and if the common difference is D, then the value of any of the term, nth term is expressed by this formula. So, a n is equal to a plus n minus 1 times d. And as we saw in this example, in this webisode, that why we can write the nth term using this formula and we use some examples to see indeed this actually is the case and it works.